say what we're doing? No. What are we doing? Today, I'm teaching Jade how to use the wheel. I usually use it as a towel, so... <laughs> Oh. For basic throwing, you only need a few tools. You need a metal rib, and then a wood rib, but it has to have the 90 degree angle. Wood knife, a red rib with a 90 degree angle. Because it's, it's squishier and more flexible. And a needle tool. All right. It's not even turning on. <laughs> Plunge, dry most of the water out of it. And we're gonna wet the wheel a little bit. Take your clay. Generally, you wedge it and then you form it into a ball, but my wedging table sucks ass. We're just gonna have to wedge it on the wheel. Okay. So once you get into a good ball shape, you throw it down. <laughs> Slowly turn on the wheel and just slap it. Nice little pats. Just little pats. Nothing too aggressive. We turn the wheel on. So you don't want to go too fast yet. Because you're still trying to... You're still securing the clay, so you put some water on it. You take your index finger. And you just put up the base and you press in a little bit. So this also helps suction it and connect it to the wheel so you won't lose it later. <laughs> Big thing about using the wheel and clay is you always have to keep the clay wet. Like, the friction is a big part of it. But now since it's connected, we can turn it up higher. You take like the fleshy parts and you squeeze up. So this is how you wedge the clay on the wheel. The only challenging thing is that if you don't pre-wedge it and you have to wedge it on the wheel, is sometimes the clay likes to disconnect when it's in a cone. Okay, so you're gonna, you're gonna flatten it again. I usually just use my my thumbs and press down. No so this is also, this is called wheel wedging. Mm -hmm. So the whole point about wedging clay before you throw, it is to get all of the air bubbles out. Also, when you put it in the kiln, it will explode. Uh, so I notice like the stuff that's on my hands. So this is called slip. This actually weakens the clay, mm -hmm. like whatever you're trying to build. So I've, if you noticed, I've been wiping it on the edge. Do the same thing where you have your right hand, I mean your left hand, and then you put your right hand over it. And so, you're walking it. so you can like form it and squeeze it. Keep your forearms on your thighs. And for this, you kind of just press forward and down to see if it's centered. So this isn't centered. And you can tell because when you run your finger on it, it shouldn't be you can feel a bump right here. Like you should, you should be able to just run your finger over and it should be smooth and continuous. It shouldn't be getting stuck. It shouldn't be bumping at all. It just means I have to do it again. Why do you have to center? Why does that matter? It's important to center. So then when you're building your walls up, you have an even amount of clay when you're doing it. Cause if it's uncentered, it's also harder to throw it because you'll feel the walls like moving. They feel wonky. I'm sure you can hear it too. So it does hurt your hands a little bit. So this clay has something called grog in it, which is basically just like sand and it just gives the clay structure for when it's drying. So generally when people throw, they don't use clay with grog in it, but my, but um, I forgot to label which clay has grog and which one doesn't. And you can't always tell when you feel it when it's dry, like when it's just in the bag. You can really only feel it when it's like wet because you can feel like the sand moving against your hands kind of thing. Feel resistance, so slowly let go. 
And it's important to do it slowly because if you do like a drastic change in pressure on the clay, it shows it. And now we can make it into, what do you want to do, a bowl? A bowl. Okay. <clears throat> so wet the clay. And then you're going to stick your thumbs in. So what I do is usually hold it for support. Just slowly. And usually you have to stop and like re-wet it a couple times. And then it's important to try to, you'll get a feel for it the longer you do it, but you need to kind of guess where or how deep the bottom is because you don't want to put the hole all the way at the bottom because then if you trim it or it will break and then it won't, it won't be a bowl. You're just, you're taking your thumbs and you're just pressing the clay down. Point your finger here. You give it a little pressure, but not too much because you don't want to squish the wall or you don't want to stress the clay out too much. Make sure you wet it and you slowly press and bring it up. I usually do like a regular like cylinder shape first just to establish something and then I then what you do is you slowly move it out for a bowl. Uh Jill took my clay off the wheel because it's not secure apparently, so we have to start over. So Jill, when did you become a potter? I started in high school, all by accident. I needed to take an elective. Yeah. Um, it was either ceramics or African drums, and you I have pick drums. I have no talent for music, so I was like, you know what? We'll try ceramics. And I remember the first day I came in, Maya Whalen was in that class, and I was so excited because I was like, oh, thank God, I know someone. And they were already making these bases. And so I came up to Mr. M, and I was like, hey, like, I'm Jillian, like, I just joined your class. And he's like, okay, like, we're doing these bases. He's like, I want you to, like, pick out a base that you like, like an ancient base, and we're going to try, like, coil building off of it. And I don't know, something just clicked inside, and I fell in love with it. She loves the mud. What can I say? Move things along a little bit. First step is the hardest part. It's really for not me. <laughs> for me. So the saying is find the middle. Jade, if you mess up, we'll just do it again. It's okay. <laughs> Is that just moving now? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Too, it's too dry. I need new clay. You this touched it too much. Mmm, delicious. This is what Jelly eats in her potting room. Yeah, it's a good snack. We do need, we're gonna go a little bit faster. This feels really weird. and push with the fleshy parts, buddy, of your hands. Not with your fingers, but the fleshy part. This is where I just want to ghost, you, you know, and just show you how to- Why is it bumpy right See there? See that? See all the stuff that's forming on your hands? Yeah. The slip? Yep. You always want to have clean hands. Press down. And don't be shy, just press down. So Jade, now that you're trying this, do you see that this is a hobby that takes time? Yeah, this is hard.
Why is it doing that?